The same way sickness was in your DNA as an unbeliever. It's the same way healing was located in your DNA. It's part of the victory we spoke about yesterday. In your, in your, in, it's, you are already healed. Your spirit already received it fully when you got saved. Glory be to God. Previously on Fresh Dew. We don't want to live short of the glory of God. When you manage that menstrual pain, you are living short of the glory of God. When you manage that migraine, you are living short of the glory of God. When you deal with that sickness, you say, I've always had it. I know how to handle it. You are living short of the glory of God. So there's some things you have to tell yourself, there is a better report. And I'm going to believe that better report. I'm going to go for that second, Pakani Nikosi. I'm going to go for that second opinion. You know what sometimes happens? When you go for the second opinion in real life, and it's better, you, first of all, you have joy, right? Hey! Don't mind that first, doctor. See now? I said it. <laughs> this is not, I, I, it's not me. I tell you do other and calm down. Then the small voice of reason will come. <laughs> Hello. What if the second doctor was wrong? Hey. It's not possible that the actual guy who was right was the first doctor. You might actually be dying slowly. And now you won't pay attention to it. Doesn't that happen? For real. Reality. So what's the smartest thing to do? Get a third opinion. In a serious case, that's what people do. You get a third one. You still don't believe it, go for a fourth one. So we've heard Isaiah. What does Peter have to say? I see the good thing about Jehovah Rapha. He runs a big medical complex. There are many doctors. So if you visit this doctor, you don't like what he says, Enter this one. It's still the best medical complex in the city. So go to another doctor. So after Dr. Isaiah has told you, by stripes you are healed, go to Dr. Peter. First Peter 2.24. What does he say? That one map puts it in the past tense. He said, Isaiah said, ah, I'm telling you that you we are healed. Ah, it's the same thing. You say no. Go to Dr. Matthew. Matthew 8.17. He cast out the spirits with his word that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Bam. He says the same thing. Uh-uh. He? You see what's going on here? Go to Dr. Paul. That one tells you your life is hid with Christ in God. That means your pancreas, your kidneys, your liver, they are packaged with Christ in God. That means to get to them, the sickness has to pass through God, through Christ, and get to them. I want to see the sickness that can do that. That's a healing scripture for me. I use that scripture as a healing scripture. My life is hid with Christ in God. So I take all my organs, my whole body, and I say, hey, no matter what symptoms I may see in my body, my life is secure. You have to break through. Christ and God to get to me. In other words, Dr. Dr. Paul says the same thing. You keep going through witness after witness after report after report after opinion. At some point, you will stop searching and believe that your healing is established. Because when four opinions Oppose the first one. You'll be a fool to still hold on to the first one and believe it. So the question is this. Why then do people struggle with believing God's report? Because the way Isaiah asks the question, it shows that he's getting frustrated. Guys, this is what's going on. He spoke into the future, spoke into the life of Christ. He's a prophet. And he could see that all these wonderful things would happen and the people would not believe. And that's what we're seeing now. 
Why are you still having Christians who don't believe all these witnesses? Why are we still struggling to believe what God has already done? Why do we have a lot of people dying young, out of sickness? Of, of course, one of the reasons is just ignorance and religion. Because someone died, I don't want to go into that, it would distract me. And you say, oh, glory to God. God has taken an angel to heaven. Oh, dirty angel. God has enough angels in heaven. Satan killed your long, loved one. Just accept it and receive comfort. And be happy that they are going to heaven because they knew Christ. But the person died earlier than they planned to. That's a painful truth. And the person who comes to heaven, God will say, ah, what are you doing here now? All the work I gave you to do, you've not done it. You came early or you enter. They will not drive them from heaven, but they came early. But in religion to pacify ourselves, well, the Lord give it. We start quoting you and the Lord take it away. So you can't fight back because you don't accept that something was stolen from you. You deal with your pain better by saying the sovereign God just dived in and took a 10-year-old from me. What? God gave you a child. You are loving your child. You have plans for your child. Then you, what God does when children die, or God, what God wants to do when children fall sick, is what he did when Jairus' daughter fell sick. 12 years old. Why didn't Jesus come and say, just accept it. She has gone to heaven. Talita, Kuma, get out of there. You're not meant to be dead at this time. And I believe that girl grew up, married, had children, and told the story of how she died. But Jesus came and rose her from the day at the age of 12. That's one of the reasons. But apart from that, why do we find it hard? Why do we find it hard to receive what God has already done? Why is it so difficult? Let's go back to Isaiah 53. Are you following me so far? You getting something from this school? Isaiah 53. He sprouted up like a tender plant, watch please, before the Lord. Like a root in patched soil, he possessed no distinguishing beauty or outward splendor to catch our attention. This Jesus, by whose stripes you were healed, this mighty deliverer, he said they looked at him. There was nothing on the outs outward. When they show you pictures of Jesus, he's six foot hunk with muscles and Mr. Universe. I'm not sure Jesus looked like that. Jesus looked normal. Just a guy who strolled. That's why he could walk through the crowd. Nobody could identify him. If he was a Mr. Universe walking like a god, he couldn't have been able to mix through the crowd. See, there was nothing, no outward splendor. There was nothing to catch our attention about him. I'm going to give you two reasons why we often miss God's report and can't believe it. No matter all the witnesses we've looked at. First reason, his report is often misunderstood by wrong assumptions and interpretations. His report is often misunderstood by wrong assumptions and interpretations. I just said there was no distinguishing beauty or outward splendor, verse 2, to catch our attention. Look at verse 4. We viewed him as one. So it was a wrong interpretation. Because of this, we looked at him as one who was being punished for something he himself had done. As one who was struck down by God and brought low. But it was actually because of our rebellious deeds that he was pierced. So what's Isaiah saying? This guy comes. Nothing to catch our attention. No outward splendor. On top of that, when we saw him, say this one, the way he's suffering, he must have done something bad. Then that same person will not come and tell you, because of me, you are healed. Are you likely to believe? Are you likely? That's what still happens to us today. 
Even in medical things, let's start from there. When you walk into a teaching hospital in Nigeria today, what do you see? What do you see? A teaching hospital or a regular hospital, leave teaching. What I like is to say. Ah, we are not a good hospital again. Now, chemist. Ah, okay, man. What kind of condition I like you to say? All manner of. Huh? No, leave ailments. The condition. Talk to me. Dirty environment. Ah, brother, please. Can you rise and let us clap for you? <laughs> Kindly clap for him. <laughs> Dirty environment. Outdated instruments. Very outdated. Light no good day. If now a doctor, a medical doctor, a senior medical doctor, who runs a private clinic herself, died recently because they took her to teaching hospital and there was no oxygen. Her husband said if she took care of herself, she would be alive today. And that's one story out of a million. Outdated equipment, broken down equipment, no light, no, the time is coming when patients will buy diesel. They are buying everything now. It remains now to buy diesel. Buy fuel. They are doing it already. Wonderful. But let me ask you another question. In those teaching hospitals, are there professors? Yes. Are they good? Yes. Very good. Very good. I've had calls to get medical attention in America. And I've had cause to get medical attention in Nigeria. The best medical attention I have received has been in Nigeria. And not Lagos or Abuja. The doctors who have impressed me the most is here in Nigeria. But I've been to the best hospital, one of the best hospitals in America. But the environment, the one here in Nigeria, it's one corner which is still sit down in the See, and I only went there because the place was highly recommended by a friend. Highly, hi, like highly. But in America, and they will roll you, air conditioner, they give you sweet as you're coming in chocolate. <laughs> what the outward splendor catches your attention. Some people would rather go to India and die than come to a teaching hospital in Nigeria where they could possibly get well. You can't blame them, because the risks are high based on the outward splendor. Whenever you assess the outward splendor of something, they will not get your attention. And that's what they did with Jesus. They checked him out. There was nothing there. So preach all you want, this one, that God is probably punishing him because of what he did. Our healing is in his hand. You better we die now. And they walked away. We despised and rejected him. There are people I know who have gone to India and come back in coffin. But if they were here, they could have helped them. There are some medical ailments about black people. Oyibo does not know. Oyibo doesn't, they don't know. Oyibo doesn't have fibroid. You didn't know that. Oyibo women don't have fibroid. It's a black man and Hispanic, Hispanic situation. Oibo doesn't have fibroid. So you rush to Oibo land for fibroid. They will kill you there. Because they don't know what fibroid is. Fibroid is blood. They will just kill you. They don't know what to do. We are better off here taking care of things like fibroid. But why would you want to open up yourself in a dirty, rat-infested, no-light place? You, you, will not, you will not do it. The outward. So you misinterpret what is good. Are you getting what I'm saying? Another way the outward affects you is when you see the symptoms. God has called some cases here now this morning. Some of you have instantly received your healing. You go home. After two days, the outward begins to talk. 
You see that thing on your body again. Today you check your breast, the lump is gone. And after two days, you check it again. You feel, ah, this lump is back. Now what for that pastor? So now temporary healing she they give. You have lost it. You have lost it. You saw the outward. You forgot what God had done. You may not even have seen anything yet. But if you've received it, you go home praising God. It may take you two or three days to show up. But you look at the outward, ah, ah, now. So how long you want to wait for this healing? Make it come. I beg, I hear there's one man there that is, you divert. You've lost it. And it is still happening to us today. We watch the outward and we miss God. God works from the inside out. The same way sickness was in your DNA as an unbeliever. It's the same way healing was located in your DNA. It's part of the victory we spoke about yesterday. In your, in your, it's, you are already healed. Your spirit already received it fully when you got saved. Glory be to God. Second reason why we miss it. We like to run with what is popular. We his report is often rejected by the popular vote. His report is often rejected by the popular vote. Verse 3 says, He was despised and rejected by men. A man of deep sorrows, who was no stranger to suffering and grief. He was despised and rejected. Not by one man, by men. So as long as the, the, the generality of people are doing one thing, many times we move along with them. And when you follow people like that, you miss what God has in store for you. Everybody needs to know Jesus for themselves. You need to, when you go to consult your doctor, you don't carry everybody along with you. The best you carry is your close family. So you can't follow the group. Everybody else says this about healing. Now let me go stand. No. You stand for yourself and go. Glory be to God. So let's look at Jairus very quickly now. Jairus' story, the story of a man who got himself a second opinion. Do we have the Amplified? So on this, you have a mic. Please read for me. Mark 5, 22 to 24. 27, and then 35 to 42. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came up and seeing him fell at his feet and begged anxiously with him saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her so that she will be healed and leave. 24. And Jesus went with him, and the large crowd followed him and pressed in around him from all sides. 27. She had heard reports about Jesus, and she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his outer robe. While he was still speaking, some people came from the synagogue official's house, saying to Jairus, Your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher any longer? Overhearing what was being said, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Only keep on believing in me and my power. And he allowed no one to go with him as witnesses, except Peter and James and John and the brother of James. They came to the house of the synagogue official and he looked with understanding at the uproar and commotion and people loudly weeping and wailing in mourning. When he had gone in, he said to them, why make a commotion and weep? The child has not died, but is sleeping. They began laughing scornfully at him because they knew the child was dead, but he made them all go outside and took along the child's father and mother and his own three companions 
and entered the room where the child was. Taking the child's hand, he said tenderly to her, Talitha Kumi, which translated from Aramaic means little girl, I say to you, get up. The little girl immediately got up and began to walk, for she was 12 years old, and immediately they who witnessed the child's resurrection were overcome with great wonder and utter amazement. Amen. Thank you. That's a very interesting story of a man who sought a second opinion. We saw two opinions there. My daughter is at the point of death. I don't believe Jairus came up with that on his own. He must have gone to a doctor who'd been counseling, um, consulting with them, and got to the point. Whatever the thickness was, we don't know. But it had literally brought the girl to the point of death. That literally means to her last breath. She was gasping with her last breath. He didn't give up. Because he went to Jesus and he said, lay your hands on her and she will live again. Two diametrically opposing reports. For him to have left his daughter's bedside, he took the risk, which is what eventually happened, that in his absence, his baby girl can die. So a good father could have said, let me be there by her bedside. Let me at least be there when she dies. But the only reason you will go for a second opinion is when you reject the first opinion. As long as you accept the first opinion, there will be no reason to go for the second one. First of all, you must recognize who Jesus is if you're going to receive healing from him. If you think he's just another prophet, you must also recognize the vessels he wants to use. If you don't recognize the healing anointing, you pack in Akisa, you can't receive your healing. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved Lord Jesus I come to you today I believe you are the son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith and what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you.
Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 37 37 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nketi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nketi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.